Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Crisis of Character. The series in which I take a look at notable characters from film, TV, and video games in order to break down who they are and how they work. In this week's episode, I'll be diverting away from video games and turning instead towards television to take a look at a beloved figure of 90s science fiction television. He's an alien, he's got an absurd accent, and he's one of the most beloved aspects of the franchise he came from. This week, we're talking about Babylon 5's Londo Malari. Londo Malari is best known as the Centauri Republic's ambassador to Babylon 5. Though he has held other titles and positions both in his history and during his time on the show, it is in this role that he is most well remembered. As you might suspect, this means he is also a member of the Centauri species, a humanoid species born from the world of Centauri Prime. Though very human-like in appearance, they are in fact in no way related to humans, despite what they told the people of Earth upon first contact. Londa himself was the head of the noble house Malari, an old and respected family from Centauri Prime. Despite the nobility of his birth, he was, for much of his life, considered something of a joke by high Centauri society, something which was never lost on him. He was also infamously indulgent, known for his trio of vices, wine, women, and gambling. Despite all this, he would eventually rise to high office within the Centauri Republic, moving from his largely disparaged post as Ambassador to Babylon 5, all the way to becoming the Prime Minister of the Centauri Republic, before eventually becoming Emperor Malari II. It would be in this highest of positions that Londo's life would end. He died in a struggle with an assailant, his longtime rival, and by the end, friend, the non-religious and political leader, Jakar. As said previously, Londo Malari was born on the world of Centauri Prime as heir to the great and respected House Malari, on their estate somewhere in the northern provinces of the Centauri homeworld. The exact date of his birth is somewhat hard to pin down, as is his exact age, but we do know that the Centauri can live to be around 150. We also know that, by the time of his appointment to Babylon 5, he is already some way into his middle age, judging by comments made about him, and indeed, comments made by him with him at least once, having referred to himself as a tired old Republican. Despite the somewhat comical and indeed bitter figure he would come to be leading up to and in the early stages of his appointment to Babylon 5, it would seem that as a young man, Londo was not only a respectable and enthusiastic Centauri, he was also a rather skilled combatant and by some accounts a successful soldier. As a youth, he had been a member of a well-respected fighting school and eventually joined the Kuro Prido, or Proud Knives, a society of highly skilled Centauri swordsmen. It was in this society that he would earn the name Pasoliati for his skill in combat. He is also noted for having been a skilled fighter pilot, it being mentioned that he had led a raid on a world known as Firaxis 12. Though we know almost nothing about the world or the actual raid, it appears to have been an engagement worth boasting about. Later in his life, he would fall into a state of indolence and indulgence, as well as becoming a subject of mockery to Centauri society in general. It's uncertain if his indulgences led to this mockery or that the mockery led him to his indulgences, but in either case, his later career was marked by a number of postings only acquired because no one else desired them. The two most notable being his posting as Ambassador to Earth prior to the earth Bari War, a post granted to him simply because it required someone of noble birth and no one else wanted to do it, and then his later posting as Ambassador to Babylon 5, a post granted to him for much the same reason. It is also worth noting that Malari had, as the series began, three wives, all of whom famously hated their husband as much as he hated them. All three marriages had been forced upon him in order to maintain political alliances with the houses from which the women hailed, the names being Timov, Dagir, and Marielle. During his career as ambassador to Babylon 5, Londo would earn the favour of the Centauri Emperor, who granted the ambassador permission to divorce all but one of his wives. Despite Dagir and Marielle's attempts to lavish love and affection on their hated husband prior to his decision, Londo ultimately elected to remain married to Timov, citing her honesty about her contempt for him as the reason, saying that he will always know where he stands with her. Londo Malari is, it is safe to say, a deeply flawed character. Indeed, it is by these flaws he is defined far more than by his positive traits. He is a man with a short temper, easily roused to rage and shouting and bellowing. He is also a deeply prickly man, very easily insulted. Despite this, however, he is also a man who has very little means to back up his rage and defence, leaving him oftentimes seeming like a bag of hot air, full of sound and fury, but signifying nothing. 
He is also, as mentioned before, infamously weak in regards to his indulgences. Renowned for spending vast amounts of time and money at gambling tables or on great quantities of expensive drink. This somewhat having led to his reputation as being a drunken swine, no doubt adding to his less than stellar reputation among Centauri society. He's also somewhat known as a dishonest man and a cheat, while also generally seeming to lose far more than he wins at the gambling tables. Beyond this, he is also, despite appearing on the surface often rather happy and clownish, a deeply bitter, cynical and sad individual. Due to the combination of the requirements of his noble position and his awareness of how badly he is viewed by those around him, Londo does suffer from terrible bouts of loneliness and self-doubt. Even as he begins to rise again in the eyes of his people, he continues to feel the sense of crushing loneliness as he reveals to the human security chief of Babylon 5, Michael Garibaldi, when he sought to share his success with his friends, and he found that he really had none. He is also burdened with an intense sense of pride. While this may seem counterintuitive when you recall how aware he is of his much diminished status among his peers, it can indeed be seen that he has become so aware of his own pride out of a desire to protect and maintain what little reputation and dignity he has left. In many ways, Londo Malari is very much his own worst enemy. His rather lacking impulse control, where his vices are concerned, as well as his rather reactionary and prideful nature, often cause him to make decisions he would otherwise not have made, and indeed ones that would seem to go against what he himself believes is good or right. He is a character who likes to believe he has principles and morality to which he holds himself, but he, like many people, tragically falls short of this moral ideal that he seeks to hold himself to, often acting against his own principles out of rage or fear. A great deal of the evils committed by and upon his own people are in some way his responsibility, and in many cases aren't at all how he'd wished the situation to unfold. He simply finds himself swept up in the wake of his earlier actions, and either becomes terrified of the consequences of attempting to turn that tide away from its course, or believes himself powerless to change anything. His excuses are myriad and at times convincing, but they do remain excuses. This is not to say that Londo is entirely without redeeming qualities. He reveals himself time and time again throughout the series to be a remarkably clever and cunning individual. Once his fear has been overcome and he is able to push himself to act in support of his principles, he is able to concoct complex and largely successful webs of conspiracy in order to achieve his aims. Beyond this, he can, when forced to by circumstance, be a very brave man at times, even showing a willingness to sacrifice himself to save the lives of others. He's also a man who, despite having a reputation of being dishonest and a bit of a cheat, is generally rather true to his word. If he swears something, he will fulfil the promise made. This is evidenced many times, but most notably when, in exchange for serving as a distraction, Londo promises the captive Jakar that he would free his people from Centauri control. When forced, Londo has the determination and the cleverness to serve both his people and to stick to his principles. It's just a shame that he is so often so weak and relatively easily manipulated. When you get beyond Londo's weaknesses and failings, past his reactionary anger and his fragile ego, his motivations are honestly rather plain. While he himself is prone towards dishonesty and duplicitous behaviour, things common among noble Centauri due to the cutthroat nature of their nation's imperial court, Londo was driven at his heart by two things. First and foremost of these is his patriotism. Despite the fluctuating power and prestige of the Centauri Republic over his lifetime, Londo has always been a staunch supporter and proponent of his people's interests, even when such a stance would seem to place himself and his own position into jeopardy. While this may not be entirely obvious due to his behaviour, oftentimes subverting the orders given to him by those higher in the political hierarchy, or on occasion outright acting against the specified goals of his Republic and his Emperor, he does his best to protect and serve the Republic. On a smaller and more personal scale, however, Londo is a very self-interested individual. When the fate of the Republic isn't at stake, Londo seems most driven either by a desire to improve his standing among the Centauri and the standing of his house, or, barring that, to simply position himself so that he may best enjoy that which he already has. In these motivations, he is very much in line with most other Centauri, and could, to a degree, be considered a simple man with extravagant pleasures, were it not for how often his patriotism and his desire to improve his station in society conflicts with his own somewhat slapdash sense of morality and decency. It is from this conflict between his 
normally overriding sense of self-interest and his sense of morality, that much of the depth to his character emerges, and it is in this conflict that we truly see the tragic figure that Londo embodies. Normally, at this point in the video, I'd stop to discuss some of the problems inherent to the way the character is presented and written, and attempt to reconcile these issues. There are certainly issues like this with Londo Malari, as indeed there are with almost every character in Babylon 5. While a beloved show to me, and to many others, it is hardly a faultless one. In this case, however, I prefer to talk about something I've noticed about Londo Malari that I believe to be a rather clever aspect to his function within the series. Rather than merely being a member of the Centauri Republic and an ambassador for it to the station, to my mind, Londo Malari is the metaphorical embodiment of the Centauri Republic as a whole. At any given point in the story of Babylon 5, his position and state can be directly correlated to the position and state of his nation. As the series begins, he is pompous, deeply hedonistic and loud. He often makes great shows of outrage and fury, but ultimately is revealed to be toothless. Those very same traits could be ascribed to the crumbling Centauri Republic at that time, a nation whose wealth, political power and influence with other races was increasingly diminishing, but one that still indulged in great pageantry and pomp, but which would ultimately buckle when pressed. As Londo began to rise in the eyes of the Centauri court, with the help of Mr. Morden and his associates, the Centauri Republic itself began the first steps in its gradual return to glory. As Londo began to realise, to his horror, that events were spinning out of control, and those with whom he conspired were putting his own life and the lives of those for whom he cared in danger, out of short-sighted greed and their own self-serving agendas, so too was the Centauri Republic held in the grip of the mad Emperor Cartagia, a murderous lunatic who was happy to offer his world to burn in the belief that the deaths of his people would elevate him, and only him, to godhood. Even at the end, Londo and the Republic mirrored each other, Emperor Malari II sat in his throne, a twisted, bitter ruin of a man, a weak puppet dressed in the tassels of false authority and power, so broken and warped by years of control by a dark power that cared not for him or his people, that he should not only invite his death at the hands of his once bitter rival Shakar, but that he should greet it warmly and embrace it as best he could. As Londo sat in his broken state, so did the Republic. Even as he died, the capital of the Republic burned beyond the windows, a desiccated ruin of a once great nation. Londo Malari is a perfect example of just what the series Babylon 5 is remembered for. In him, and indeed in his rival Shakar, we have a pair of remarkable characters who managed to embody so much that is true about humanity. Despite being an alien from a foreign and in many cases absurd culture, Londo is a distinctly understandable and sympathetic character. Though the history books of his world would be right to condemn him as a monster and war criminal for the things which he caused, if not necessarily directly did himself, he is nonetheless a character it is difficult to hate. In him we can see the weakness that exists within all of us, and in that we can too see exactly how dangerous that weakness can be if it is allowed to overrule morality and principle out of fear. He is a truly tragic figure in that it was not evil that drove him, nor malice, nor even greed. It was simply that he had a great love for his people, but was unable to see the consequences of his actions, and when he did see them, he felt powerless to act, and when he did finally act, it was entirely too late to fix the damage that had been done. <laughs>